Um, a couple of things. First off, it's emerged late last night and early this morning that the Rangers Capo Caco is on the trade block. Ooh, who said and, that? Well, the insiders on Insider Trade. <laughs> Mr. Ooh, Darren Dreger. Yeah. Now, what do we think about this? This is a guy that really hasn't panned out. Uh, Lafreniere has cooled off quite a bit, too. But he's yeah. had a better year. Um, these are two guys the Rangers really, really needed to step up and be a part of what they were building. You know, when they signed Panarin and they were a non-playoff team, the reason they did that is because they're like, we're going to move quick. And it hasn't really worked out. Players like Lafreniere and Kako are so hard to manage from like an expectations standpoint. Kako was drafted second overall. Lafreniere was drafted first overall. But you can't run your team with that number hanging over you or, or weighing you down like a boat anchor. Mm -hmm. You got to do what's best for your team. How good do you expect this player to be? How good is this player now? How much of a fit are they for you now? Um, and like, are they disappointing for a first overall pick? Are they disappointing for a second overall pick? I think you can be disappointing for a first overall pick and for a second overall pick and still be a very effective player. Yeah. So there's all these things weighing in. Like, I, I don't think a lot of Rangers fans want to deal either of those guys um, because of the number there because of who could have been drafted in their place. Yeah. Because of it hurts what they could be and what they could be for you is a trade chip. And the other thing here is the Rangers are in a real tough spot. Like, should they be contending? Hell yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought they should have done better last year. They should be going for it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like if, if you're looking at the Metro, how do you not think you can come away with that division if you're the Rangers? Oh, you 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 should own it. You can th you should definitely think you have a very good chance of coming out of that division that puts you in the final four, and then all bets are off. And you're and and going into the season, your biggest rival in terms of skill is New Jersey, and they fell fell off. They fell injuries off and injuries and, and Pang whatnot. Pittsburgh hasn't been good. Washington's been weird. Washington's uh, the been Islanders weird. had to fire their head coach. Like there's this is their division. Carolina's playing great. Uh, can't, can't stop. make a save like it's the opportunity is there and they just lost Philip Heedle oh. for the whole season yeah that's the panic with Kako right now is that you need a couple centers if you're realistically looking at the Rangers roster and they're at the point in the like if you're still thinking about how they released the letter about how they're doing a rebuild and then they've gone through the rebuild and then all of a sudden they're back good again they've reached the ceiling of their players and it seems like the roster that they have currently constructed and they need some sort of shake up to take them to another level and when you lose uh, a center like Hedl it looks like Sean Monahan or Elias Lindholm need to become Rangers so that they can just keep this window of contention open and your your guys who are aging out of this this rebuild here are going to remain with the team and hopefully go on a Stanley Cup run. Yeah. And yeah, like you guys are saying, your window of opportunity is right there. So Kako becomes the expendable piece, a number two overall pick from a couple of years ago, but time moves so fast. Yeah. You know, he's been in the NHL for quite a while now and he's played full seasons. And so that's five, the trade, tr yeah. five seasons. That's the trade trip you got to use so that you can support the rest of the roster and hopefully contend this season. And speaking of time, Artemi Panarin, mm -hmm. 11.6 Not getting million. younger. He is 32 years old, man. He He's played 49 games this year. He played 82 last year. He already has more goals than he did last year. He had 29 last year. He's already at 30, plus 36 assists. He has 66 points in 49 games. Mm -hmm. At 32 years old, he's going to turn 33 at the beginning of next season. He might be just as good, if not better, next year, but that's not where the smart money is. Right. The smart money is this is the best version of Artemi Panarin you're ever going to have. And that's it. Chris Kreider is approaching the back nine. Mm -hmm. Zibanejad, like all these guys who you remember getting Pro -check. drafted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they have a lot of guys entering and tail end of prime. Even Shesterkin is 28. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like, and it doesn't feel like that because goalies are weird. 
They really got to contend. Well, I, I think they really need to go for it this year. I think the wrinkle, too, is that there is something tantalizing about Capo Caco. He had 40 points last year. That's really not That's bad. A good depth winger. Yeah. And his ice time has gone down by two, almost two full minutes under Peter Lavi- Laviolette per game. He's got five goals and an assist this year in 28. And I think it's very apparent that he's an RFA at the end of the year and they haven't worked out some sort of extension yet. It's it's that's unfortunately for the Rangers and how they've built this team. Everybody that they've drafted to support the older guys hasn't really worked out that great. Yeah. You know, if you look at laugh, if you look at Kako and it's time to move those pieces to get guys in that'll help you contend right now because your windows are closing. Exactly. And I think you look at um, uh, you look at what Montreal has on offer. Obviously, the Rangers in Montreal have been linked because of Sean Monaghan, right? Sean Monaghan's had a good year. There, It was funny on that insider trading segment. They're like, well, they haven't ruled. The Montreal Canadiens haven't ruled out talking about an extension with Monaghan. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Right. Yeah, like Sign him in the summer yeah. if it's that important to you. No, go get your first round pick. Exactly. But well, if you are the Rangers and you know that the Rangers and the Canadians friend offices hate each other, right? <laughs> like, I don't it? think they get. Oh, I don't yeah, think they, they get st- along. They can still make trade. They can still make a trade. And that's yeah. going to be fascinating. I'm wondering about um, if if you include Kako in a deal like that, mm-hmm. does it allow for New York not to give up a first round pick and then they can go and like maybe they give up their second this year, which is the last second that they have for the next three years. Mm-hmm. Give up the second and Kako. I don't know if that gets the deal done. I'm just throwing it out there and whatever else you want to throw in there. And then you could take that other first first rounder and deal that for another center. So because you probably need to. All yeah. we know about Sean Monahan is whatever teams pay for him is going to be too much. That's, yeah, that's, and that's not to denigrate his season, which has been good. No, but how about this? How about this? Let me let me let me throw this to you. Um, Sean Monahan's going to be what third line center, right? Third line center. I think so. Yeah, on a what, good team, he should be. What uh, would the th- would a first round pick and a recent third round pick prospect be a reasonable price, or is that too much? I don't know. I I, I actually don't know what the market is. The so, market apparently is really hot on him. So maybe 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 it would. The reason I use that as an example is this trade was looked at as crazy at the time. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks in 2015 traded Klaus Dahlbeck, who was at the time a recent third-round pick, and a first-round pick in 2015 mm-hmm. for Antoine Vermette. I remember that deal. And he was their third-line center. I don't really think he played much higher than that. I can't remember if they had a ton of injuries on that run, but I feel like most of them were on the back end. That's one of those deals that is only worth it. There, there are so many deals that were not very good, but they won. So you don't care what the price was. That was when they were playing chemo team and in like four minutes a night It was because br- they needed to dress six. They had, I, I want to say Jalmerson was hurt. So they were basically down to Keith Seabrook and like Oduya. Yeah. And uh, another one, the Bruins getting Caberlet in 2011. Low key, that trade sucks. They won. Who yeah. cares? Who cares? They won. They won. So, Rangers fans, I need you to get real good and comfortable with being uncomfortable here because I think the Rangers got to make a move and it's going to feel like too much at the time. And the hope is that you come out of it on the other side uh, with rings. I think they. Yeah, have, I think that's what they want. Yeah. I think. I think going for it is is what Rangers fans want here. Like sitting around and doing nothing doesn't help the team. You they, go and you pay whatever it takes to to win because you're not going to have these uh, these opportunities all the time. If the playoffs began today, the Rangers first opponent, or Rangers first round opponent, would be who? Is it a wild card team? Yes. Oh, shit. Oh, no, it. it's the Leafs? The Toronto Maple Leafs. Ah! <laughs> uh, if Hilarious. Because uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning are ahead of them, although the Lightning, by points percentage, are way behind. Dude, I'll um, take that. Uh, Dude, the, do we get a break from playing teams in this friggin' division? It'd be nice, but we're not going to because uh, we're ahead of Tampa. Not, but not Columbus. with New York being where they are, I can't believe Carolina is still in this with the goaltending they've had. Mm-hmm. Um, with New York, if they are able to play a wild card team, it's somebody from... 
it's either it's it's either Tampa, Toronto, or Detroit likely that they're going to play. Mm-hmm. If they somehow lose the division lead to the Carolina Hurricanes, which is entirely possible because of the Canes and they're solid, um, then they're playing the Flyers. Do you want to play John Tortorella's team? Oh, 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 what a great story there! Well, like. I don't know if you want to play Tortorella in the playoffs. I've, I've seen my team play him, and he, he's suffocating to play against. I mean, And imagine Flyers fans getting a dunk on Rangers fans, how much they'd love that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just saying, if I'm New York, I need this division. You're this writing year, off a division. lot of teams. Well, who do like, you think would jump in? Cal Dubas is going to come to your house one day, Adam, and like spit in your water. Yeah, and he's going to be like, yeah, stuff. you were right. My team is not a playoff team. <laughs> no, like, watch, <laughs> out, watch out for the Pittsburgh Penguins in the second half. They're right there. They're in a position for a playoff spot. Well, they're 4-3-3 three, three and three in their last 10. So. That's exactly where we want them. Yeah, they got, <laughs> they got three games in hand and are six back. Oh, well... They have more points in their last 10 than the Leafs? No. Uh, more than Detroit? No. Oh, more than the Islanders. There you go. So you can be uh, the closest team who missed the Dude, imagine New York. Instead of the second closest. Imagine team. New York. Because wins. their last 10 is how they're going to play for the rest of the te- season. Yeah. That's how last 10 works. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's how it works. <laughs> you didn't know that? Yeah. Uh, no, they can't win more games. They that's can't. impossible. Simply can't. Yeah. No. Uh, man, the Washington Capitals have really fallen off, eh? Just, Where are they right now? I didn't like, even see them on. They're the- underneath the Penguins. Oh dear. Um, the uh, the other one that I'm I'm fascinated by are the Islanders. Um, currently five points out of a playoff spot. Uh, negative a billion goal differential. Yeah, but negative twenty three actually. It's like, how'd you pull that? But off? if they get in, like, how are you there? If they get in, though, that's not a team you want to play. What's the record for worst goal differential to ever make the playoffs? To make the playoffs in the cap era? I don't know. Do you know? They've got to be like right there. Probably. (laughs) They've got to be right there.